Hey, what's up guys? Dr. Kyle Lovelace here. Today I want to talk to you about how do you get your stomach healthy again? And I say just the stomach, not just your gut, but your stomach in general, not just your, not, not your um, small intestines, large intestines, but specifically, we're going to zero in on the stomach health because here's the thing is that has to get, everything has to get through there first before it gets to the lower GI tract. So when we start talking about SIBO, we start, it's just small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. We start talking about some of the stuff happening in the colon. We got to go back to the front because the beginning of digestion really, well, really it happens in the mouth with chewing and things like that. But when it gets down to the stomach, the um, amount of stomach acid and things like that that you have is going to be very important. And the lining of, you know, the mucosal lining of your stomach is very important as well. And that all plays a role in how well you're going to break down food and the enzymes that are getting released to that process. So this is very important to know that your stomach health is actually the start of it all. Okay. So when we talk about psoriasis, when we talk about any kind of autoimmune response, or we talk about constipation, we talk about diarrhea, bloating, the first thing we look at is stomach right? What's happening in the stomach. And for most of us, because we're in a stressed response most of the day, there's not a good, not a good balance in stomach acid. When our body's in a fight or flight mode, the stomach acid is going to come down because we're not there to digest food. And that's, that's why things like ulcers actually happen over time. Poor stomach acid leads to mucosal lining issues. And eventually that mucosal lining um, process is in there properly. And the acid that is there starts to burn a hole in the gut and you get ulcers and you get things like that. So stress is really the key our balancing stress really is the key to having a good um, digestive health in general, but specifically the stomach acid. So we look at this and we say, okay, how it was stomach acid? If you're someone with st acid reflux, that tells you that your stomach acid is actually too low and the gastric esophageal sphincter, which closes when our stomach acid gets in balance, never closes and you're getting acid coming back up. Now the medical approach is going to say take omniprozole or so some sort of pro proton pump inhibitor. The problem is, is that's inhibiting the acid production, which isn't what we want to do. We want your body to produce the proper amount of acid. We just don't want it coming back up. Okay. And by the way, if you're on omniprozole or something like that, go back to my video on acid reflux. Very important that you watch that video. Um, you're not supposed to be on that for a very long period of time. I've had people coming in six years, seven years, even more than that on omniprozole, and that leads to a high blood pressure issue. It's going to lead to heart problems. It's going to lead to a lot of issues down the road. All right, so number one, what's the first thing you can do to help your stomach, and specifically stomach acid on this one, is if, if you know your stomach acid is low, maybe you already have acid reflux or you have other digestive problems, then I would say give it support. Okay, so take something like betaine HCL or apple cider vinegar or both. You can do a shot of apple cider vinegar and water every morning and then take betaine HCL before your, before your meals. And that helps give your body the stomach acid that it needs. And a lot of times just doing that will help a ton with lower GI tract issues like, um, like constipation and things like that, but also with acid reflux. Usually apple cider vinegar is effective. If it's not effective, then you definitely want to do betaine HCL just because it's stronger. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is slow down, and that's the hardest part. I talk about this a lot, but slowing down on your eating plan or in your eating is going to be huge. Meaning, when you eat, don't be doing something else. Don't be walking around. Uh, don't be doing work on a computer. Uh, don't be you know running around the house, things like that. Have a seat, relax, put some relaxing music on. Get your body into a parasympathetic or relaxed state before you eat, so that you're actually digesting that food. Okay, so number two is actually slow down so you can digest your food. And I'll just add to that in that slow down process, make sure you're properly chewing your food, make sure you're giving your, your enzymes and stuff like that that comes in saliva a chance to actually help you break down that food so that your stomach acid can get in balance and so your body's ready to produce the stomach acid in digestion. The other thing you can do when we talk about the mucosal lining of the gut, okay, it, throughout our digestive system, we have this mucus lining in the stomach. You know, you have all this acid, you have a very low pH in the stomach. And you have the skin, well, how, I'm sorry, the mucosal line that protects the tissues, the epithelial tissue to uh, the acid. And that mucosal lining is very important from stress and from uh, different medications, which I'll talk about in a second, um, actually can reduce that mucosal lining. So I like to take something um, for patients that have gut issues, give them chamomile. And chamomile actually stimulates what's called your goblet cells, and that re releases more mucus, okay? But again, it goes back to stress is the key there. Okay, that last, the last thing I'm going to recommend for overall stomach health is to stay away from NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. They've become a mainstay in America. They've become something that um, just everybody does. It's in that you know, mirrored cabinet in the bathroom that we, that we all had growing up. Hopefully, you don't use it much anymore. But if that thing's chunk full of medications, we know that you're not healthy. And so the key is, is 
when, we, when you have a headache, when you have a, a, an ache or a pain, not going straight to the NSAIDs, okay? Because they just in the last, uh, I think two or three years, the FDA came out with a black box warning that said it increases your chance of a heart attack by over 40% within the month that you take that NSAID. So how many people have had heart attacks from ibuprofen or from Aleve and things like that and never knew that's why it would cause it? But we also know that it's a COX-2 inhibitor, which causes the lack of that production of the mucosal lining and eventually leads to things like ulcers and many other health issues come with that, okay? So staying away from NSAIDs, I, I'm gonna personally say don't use them at all. That's my opinion, that's what you know, I've done with my life and I've had pains, I've had aches, I've had hurts. I actually have a little bit of a shoulder injury right now. Most people would go take an NSAID. I'm gonna take some turmeric, which also is a COX-2 inhibitor with, without the same negative side effects. And I'm just gonna work on, my, on, the, on the issue, okay? So I know pain, I know we have that, but use other things like turmeric, like uh, CBD oil, things like that that can be way more effective, it can be just as effective, but not cause a negative impact on your gut. Because that stomach health is very important in that if we're not breaking down food up high, it's gonna be really hard to have good health down low. So you're taking these supplements for SIBO, or you're taking these you know, things that are gonna help uh, clean your microbiome up with probiotics, right? But the problem is, is your stomach acid is out of alignment. You're not breaking your food down, so it's just adding more stress into the lower GI tract, and that never gets in balance. So start up high, okay? So use those three things to start to work on your stomach acid. If you really have severe stomach acid issues in terms of acid reflux, and you're on a medication, let's start moving to these natural things so that you can get off of them because um, your digestive health really decides a lot of your other health. Cool. Hey guys, make sure you subscribe to this channel and share this video. There's a lot of people with digestive issues that are going into a more of a medical approach and getting sicker from it, and you could be that change in their life to make it different. All right, you guys have an awesome day. We'll talk to you next time.